Welcome everyone to our special meeting this afternoon. We have full council in attendance today and a couple of items on our agenda. I will read the resolution to open up the meeting. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. Our first order of business for this evening is first reading of the procedural bylaw. We have a administrative report attached that everybody's had an opportunity to see. I will read the resolution and then go around and we can discuss. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-8, being a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul to regulate the proceedings and conduct of the council and the committees thereof, and repeal bylaw number 2020-13 be read a first time. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Craig. So everybody's had an opportunity to look at the administrative report, the two sections being amended are section 13.5 that deals with the abstention issue. Councillor Link had pointed out at a previous previous meeting uh, discrepancy between two sections of the bylaw. We open up the bylaw section 13.0 abstentions only for third reading of a bylaw as per municipal act and our 13.5 didn't clarify that. So we discussed that at all of our uh, meetings for the procedural bylaw, four meetings that we had in education briefings with Maria and that discrepancy there didn't reflect what we had talked about with council and it was good that Councillor Link had pointed that out. And 17.15 is to correct a reference clause in the Municipal Act that was uh, an incorrect section referenced. I'll go around the table and see if there are any questions. Councillor Link, any questions, concerns? Whoops. Um, I don't have questions and, uh, about those two sections. Can we discuss any other sections of the procedural bylaw? My understanding is we were just amending those errors. Uh, miss the two sections that were not consistent uh, and then a, a typo error. Um, I'll just confirm, Ms. Shaw, are we making any other changes or it's just to correct that to clear up the discrepancy? Thank you, Madam Mayor. This proposed bylaw just changes the, the two issues noted in the administration report, um, but we can certainly revisit this bylaw in the future. Thank you, Ms. Um, may, may I ask for some questions about how to interpret this bylaw? Sure, go ahead. Okay. I'm looking at section 17.3. When the chair is putting a question, no member shall leave his or her chair. Am I correct? What does, or I'm gonna ask, what does putting the question mean? What happens when you put the question? I don't believe that that's one of the items that are being amended. That is the same meaning when we've approved the bylaw twice before. I, I don't think we clarified an interpretation of any of the sections. Uh, I'm just asking for clarification, meaning so that I understand this bylaw and can follow it. Well, what I think does we, putting we the question mean? We could set up an education briefing to go through that. If it's concerning, if there are members of council that don't understand the bylaw, we can have an education briefing and we can go section by section in terms of what it means. I think this is the third time in this term that we've looked at it. I don't think we've clarified meaning. You can do what you, if you don't wish to answer that, that is fine. Um, thank you very much. Ms. Shaw, I'll refer that question to you in terms of what does it mean when we put the question forward? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my quick review would, would be that the question is calling for the vote to council. Um, 
but I, I could look at that further and then that would just be my uh, my first um, my first quick opinion on it without referring to the bylaw. Yep. No concerns with the two amendments. At this time, we have two more uh, votes on this as well. This is only first reading. Councillor Link. Uh, I would appreciate that educational briefing happening in the not too distant future. Thank you. I have no other questions at this time. Thank you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions regarding the two amendments? No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any concerns regarding the two amendments? Yes, uh, I'm not quite sure what this re uh, administration report is referring to. It says 13.5, which I understand is removing the um, notation or the reason for abstaining from the vote. But it says to correct the reference clause in 17.15. Okay, where is 17.15? I cannot find 17.15. 1715, uh, Madam Mayor, if I may address that question, is on the um, last page. Uh, it's the second last clause of the bylaw. Um, it reads, a member who breaches the requirement of confidentiality under clause 17, corrected version 17.14, becomes disqualified from council as per sections 94.1H and 95 of the Municipal Act. And, and what is it being amended from? It referenced the incorrect um, uh, clause number when we did the updates in the 2020 13. The, the numbering wasn't reflected uh, for the referenced clause. The 2020 13 references clause 17.13. The correct number to reference is 17.14. Okay. All right. Good. I, uh, I'll say that I had concerns about this bylaw being changed when it was first changed in, uh, in uh, November. I still have those same concerns. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Prague, any questions, concerns? No questions. Thank you. Having gone around the table, this is first reading. I have a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. We have, I abstain. I'm sorry, I I'm sorry. I abstain. Thank you. And I have remarks for my abstention as it's still allowed. I abstain from this vote for policy and procedural concerns. The change in the bylaw removing of abstention was to take place in November and was a great source of controversy. It remained in our bylaws and although several attempts were made by council members to abstain with remark, the procedure bylaw was not followed and abstentions have not been recorded since November 2nd, 2020. Uh, I was prevented on May 20th, I was prevented from giving remarks for the vote regarding the renewal of the CA contract and under our procedural bylaw section states the following, no member shall speak to the question or in reply for longer than five minutes without approval of counsel. I was not allowed to speak on a remark that I felt that- I cannot to... hear anything Councillor Kleiber is saying. I'll send my abstention to uh, Ms. Shaw. Can anybody else hear it? Yes, were you able to finish? No. I'll, I'll do my final paragraph and I'll send the rest to Ms. Shaw. It's a bit lengthy. Madam Mayor, I cannot report and write out at the meeting, Councillor Kleiber. Pardon me? The abstention needs to be read out at the meeting. Okay, well, can somebody then mute so that I can, maybe Mayor Christian, if you mute, maybe I can, it won't be echoing.
with respect to the removal of abstention of a vote with a remark, I would ask the community, what is wrong with the community knowing why elected members are choosing to abstain from votes? Council members may be abstaining because proper procedures of our bylaws are not being followed, or they want to abstain because they want the public to know their concerns about the subject matter. I have often heard it stated that this council is committed to transparency. Then why not allow transparency to take place in the form of documented abstention? There have been no legal issues from abstentions. I feel that the abstention with the remark should remain as part of our procedural bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fiber. If you could submit that in writing, we will send that to our municipal lawyer to see if there's been any violations of in-camera discussion regarding that abstention. All right, that item has passed. And we have item 4.1, Canada Day. We have an re administrative report attached for Canada Day and a resolution. But before I read the resolution, uh, I will turn it over to our CAO to discuss Canada Day. Good afternoon, Council. So we're going into our uh, second July long weekend without a, uh, a Canada Day. Um, uh, I've been talking to some committee members. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, with a, a lapse, the community and uh, volunteers are, are not uh, staying connected. Uh, I believe that we're due for uh, uh, to try and continue this celebration to acknowledge what the fighter fighters have done for the uh, RMOS St. Paul and to uh, to put out a, a promotional video so that we could attract more volunteers. In talking to volunteers that we have, uh, I, I'm feeling that going into next year's uh, uh, Canada Day, we're going to be having a turnover. Uh, also good for, uh, uh, this is good for morale for the community. It's it's good to celebrate, and uh, you know maybe we could uh, also do something depending on COVID restrictions with this video on Canada Day. So, a uh, possibility to do uh, 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 you know the restrictions get lifted, a movie night at the Sonova Center with the promotional uh, video that commends the fire department and talks about Canada Day giving us history. I don't think a lot of people know that Canada Day dates back into the 90s, uh, took place at Rivercrest. How is the idea hatched? Who are some of the original volunteers? Acknowledge these people and and uh, and and all the good things and hard work that's, that's happened. Uh, we would be planning on interviewing um, seven or eight members of Canada Day, so volunteers that have been there in the past, uh, former elected officials, and um, and do something here that the community could be excited about, and something that we would have forever. So uh, we we also noticed that uh, uh, the city of Selkirk is is doing some Canada Day uh, promotions. They are having bands playing, and we'll be uh, putting that on a live feed. So we're trying to. Um, do what West St. Paul can do to, to keep our Canada Day alive. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, one of the things that I'll be looking for is, is to access dollars out of our reserve fund. Uh, I'm looking for about $5,000 and then we would uh, tender to, it would be a, a quick tender where we would pull three, uh, three videoers, uh, with experience in doing this and uh, and award this tender and put something together in the next, uh, well, uh, next 21 days, next three weeks to, to be ready for Canada Day. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I will go around the council table. Councillor Cliver, any comments, concerns regarding Canada Day? Yep, I sure yep. do. 
Um, I'd like to ask the CEO through the chair, what committee council members did you talk to? Excuse me? The, the CEO made a statement that he talked to committee members from Canada Day. So I'd like to know what committee members did he speak with? Most important committee member, the, the fire chief, of course. Okay, because I'm on that committee as well and nobody contacted me. Um, why are we trying to attract volunteers when we're not having a Canada Day? I mean, we can do this next year by attracting volunteers next year. Uh, we're not doing anything this year. How is it that we're celebrating through a video? Uh, we're, we're just doing a video, a promotional video of the fire department. Is that not correct? It's not a promotional not a video promotional. for the fire department. It's to show the community what our fire department has done since the 90s. It's really a tribute and a thank you. Um, quite a few of the volunteers um, have retired. Long-time volunteers have stepped away. They've done it for decades, and they'd like some new people to step up. There's been a call from the fire chief um, to have more help, that as our Canada Day expands from a tiny Canada Day celebration in Rivercrest to over 5,000 people at the Sonova grounds, um, that we've kind of come to a crossroads. And so with the fire chief reaching out and looking for some assistance to have more involvement in that, um, we'd like to support him. We'd like to support his firefighters. And we'd like to see if we can encourage more people to participate. So COVID has meant that we can't have Canada Day because of the restrictions in terms of numbers. But it doesn't mean that we've cancelled Canada Day going forward. And so the fire chief has said, you know, in the future, he's going to need more help. And so I think with people leaving that have been participating in, in decades to help make that happen, I think it's really important that we thank our volunteers and that we really show some recognition. So I don't think that this is so much a promotional video as it is a legacy video. We've had some of these volunteers start right from the very beginning and dedicate their time. And I think it's a sign of respect from the community to really acknowledge them and pay tribute to them. And I think if we're going to have something that is so successful and really that symbolizes West St. Paul, many people come to our Canada Day from surrounding neighborhoods and say that we do a phenomenal job thanks to the fire department, that if we want that to continue and be part of our identity, then we're going to need to ensure that there's succession and that the new families coming into West St. Paul understand that this is a volunteer opportunity for them. So I think that that's really important that we, that we pay tribute and encourage more people to come on. I think that the fire chief has called uh, for help um, from to the CAO and myself. Um, there hasn't been a committee meeting, um, but his call for help, I think that we're able to provide that. I also think that coming off of strategic planning and the plan that we've created, um, maintaining our community identity is really important. And I don't think anybody at this table or the members of our community and the 5,000 people that come to our Canada Day to celebrate want to see this come to an end. So what can council do to make sure that Canada Day continues to be a success? What can we do to help our fire chief and our fire department? And what can we do to make sure that West St. Paul has a strong identity that's distinct from other communities? So why are we doing council a promotional program? video when we're not having a Canada Day? Why are we doing a video to recruit volunteers for no volunteering? Well, in the same way, Councillor Kleiber, that we had a video for Remembrance Day when we weren't able to gather and have a Remembrance Day, it's still important to acknowledge. So I think all of us are still proud to be Canadian and are still proud to be from West St. Paul. And so even though we physically can't be together, I think this is really an important opportunity to demonstrate our patriotism, our love for West St. Paul, and to show some history of what our typical Canada Day looks like and who started it and who got involved. And again, to thank our firefighters for the countless hours. These last two years, just to let residents know as well, are probably the first two years that most of our firefighters have had where they could spend Canada Day with their family. So when you're on the force uh, and you join our fire department, you're expected to donate your time on Canada Day. So they've given up decades of their time to create Canada Day in rain, in moving indoor conditions, creating uh, a celebration, asking uh, businesses for donations, setting up tents three days in advance. 
So I don't think a lot of our residents understand all the work that's gone involved. I think members of our council probably don't understand the work that's gone involved. Um, and so to, to make that known to our community is something that we should take pride in. Well, I do recall that we gave an award to the previous chief regarding his uh, volunteer time for Canada Day last Canada Day that we had. Um, I also recall that we had discussed fireworks from the Manitoba Métis Federation and that that was that was possible for this year and uh i'm not disputing the hard work of the fire department they're a fantastic group of people but i i, I question why this is coming up after budget has been approved we could have had this during our budget meetings and we could have approved it as part of our capital expenditures and now all of a sudden once the budget has been finished on may 13th and all the votes are in and the reserves are done. Now we're going back and taking things out of the reserves and suddenly there's a reason for Canada Day. So I, Canada Day history and video. Um, obviously, I'm not in favor of this. I think that money that's spent should be spent on the taxpayer as they are milled for this Canada Day reserve. They're paying for it out of their taxes and it, there should be a direct benefit to them. And I agree that we need to get more volunteers, and, but that's not gonna happen until next year. And so this could go through the budget for next year under capital expenditures, and uh, the, the fire chief could do a, a call for volunteers then or even before. That's my comments, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Bassetti, any? comments regarding the Canada Day proposal? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, it's a good thought on that. Um, I think it is a good time. I mean, we're going into our second year without, you know, the Canada Day celebrations. Some of the volunteers that were on there for years, I'm going to say, were at the point where I guess they were ready to step down. And this probably two year hiatus of this has probably made it a lot easier for them to step down. So no, I, I agree with this. And I think it would show some nice history from way back in the day, especially showing a lot of the new residents that moved to West St. Paul where it started and, uh, and the thank you to a you know, long time fire department that had not even there anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link. Uh, the money for the uh, reserve isn't in. Uh, it, it, it's in the operating uh, side of funds right now. That's my understanding. Um, I'm in favor of leaving the celebration and having as big bang up as possible in 2022, calling back the volunteers who have contributed to the past and honoring them then. Um, this would be not a capital expenditure, it would be an operational expenditure, that's where the money is. Um, we talked about this reserve fund um, I had a problem with this reserve fund at budget time, um, and, and that's fine. Uh, there, there was not agreement about this. Um, and I support, of course, the budget that was approved by the majority of council. Um, but I, I, I'm, I think it would be fine to have a leave that money as it is and uh, next year we'll be contributing more to the reserve and we can have a bang up celebration once COVID's out of the way. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Prague. I think it's a good idea to get the video. I know the, uh, the fire department will have clips of past fire events at Canada Day. They will have clips that they can put together with the volunteers. There's all, they're always shooting stuff there. And we, when this video gets out, 
There are new people that moved into the community already who will get to see this video. And that's the time to attract them, not next year when we are close to the event, then we put ourselves looking for volunteers. You always do things in advance because people, it's time management. They put times aside when they can volunteer and when they can. And they know this event is on Canada Day. So they know whether they're available or not available. And I think um, individuals should be due to COVID. This event was canceled because of regulations and we intend to, con the community, we intend to continue this in the future once COVID is finished. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Um, my comments, I'm in full support um, for many reasons. I look at the communities surrounding us, Winnipeg, Selkirk, and um, the importance that they place on culture and heritage. And uh, as, as a municipality that has identified our identity through strategic planning and have had our residents tell us that maintaining our identity um, is important, um, this kind of activity is really important. And so other municipalities are finding ways to adapt during COVID. And I believe we should step up and do the same. Uh, in terms of money that was budgeted for this and that we're not using money or it's coming after budget, uh, we budgeted money to go in our Canada Day fund for a Canada Day every year. So this council voted on a Canada Day. At our last council meeting, we were informed that Canada Day cannot take place due to COVID regulations. We determined that and voted on that to support that at the last council meeting. So this council was moving ahead ready to spend 25,000, Mr. CEO, is that what we spend per Canada Day? So this council budgeted $25,000 this year to move forward on Canada Day as with every other Canada Day. And we're scaling it back to 5,000 to make sure that our residents can still have a Canada Day. As Councillor Prague pointed out, there are members of our community that are brand new that have never been to one of our Canada Days. So how wonderful to show them what a typical Canada Day looks like and all that's involved in it. So I'm excited about that. Um, in terms of the reserve fund and that it coming from the taxpayers, that's not entirely correct. That reserve from fund is also created from fundraising that these firemen have done. So in past years, they've collected money by 50-50 uh, tickets, by donations and selling off uh, for draws. Um, and so there's money that's available based on the work that our fire department has done. Um, so there is money, it's not just from the, ta from the taxpayers. And I really think that uh, our residents are grateful and supportive of our fire department. So in a year where they can't do the work, this is the perfect year to highlight and thank what they thank them for what they normally do. So I'm 100% supportive of this. I think our fire department needs uh, a tremendous thank you and pat on the back. And what better way than to have a legacy video that um, our generation gets to see and future generations of how Canada Day got started. I think a vote to support this is a vote to support our fire chief who has called for help and they do amazing work. And I think that when they ask us for help, we should heed that call. And I think it's great to start planning for the future that if we want an event this successful to continue, we need to help encourage residents to step up and volunteer and let them know. There are many people in our community that have contacted me and asked, how can I help? How can I get involved? And if we don't tell them the different ways that they can be involved and volunteer in West St. Paul, then they won't know how. So I'm really excited about this. I appreciate all the input the council's given. We have a mover and a seconder on this. Can we get a recorded vote, please? A request for a recorded vote from Councillor Busetti. Madam Mayor, I'm sorry, I don't have a recorded uh, mover or seconder on this. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Shaw. I'll I need a mover it. and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Busetti. Seconded, Councillor Prague. We've had discussion, a request for a recorded vote from Councillor Bassetti, and I will call for the question. All those in favor? Councillor Link, Councilor you're on mute. Point of order, please. I would like to suggest an amendment to the, re to the resolution. And that Sorry, amendment Councillor Link, we've just, I've just taken the vote. 
You have just taken the vote. We well, have a recorded vote. I, we have not taken just the vote yet. The, the vote. vote is not complete yet. I'm in the middle of taking the vote. So I don't believe that the resolution can be amended. It needed to be amended, Councillor Link, before I called for the question and three Did you call voted. for amendments? <clears throat> Madam Mayor, did you call for amendments? Madam Mayor, you did call for a mover and a seconder. I called for a mover and a seconder, and then I called for the question and three people voted in favor. Councillor Link had her hand up during the call for the question. You didn't recognize her. I'll go to the mover and the seconder. The mover and the seconder, are you willing to amend this at this point now that we've called for the question? No, says the mover. So I have three in support. We have a recorded vote. I've called I, I all those respect. all those opposed. I'm abstaining with a remark. As part of our budget preparations, all expenditures are discussed by council prior to the public hearing. The first reading of the budget took place on May 6th and the second and third reading took place on May 13th. At no time was it mentioned that money would be used from the Canada Day Reserve to make a promotional video for Canada Day and the fire department. It is my understanding when we develop the reserve fund that monies are set aside for the community to take part in a celebration on Canada Day. In my opinion, I see no tangible benefit for the community from a promotional video. I am thankful for our very capable fire department and their fantastic contribution to Canada Day. They do so with willing hearts and are always in a state of giving back to the community without complaint. In fact, I have been part of the Canada Day Committee as a council liaison for two years and have enjoyed volunteering and working with the fire department. But I feel that instead of using reserves for a promotional video, a sponsor could be found to cover the cost for such an endeavor. Canada Day reserves should be used for the taxpayer to enjoy Canada Day. I suggest that we either delay our celebration to the September long weekend or possibly provide a celebration with a short fireworks display that the entire community could enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clyburn. Your CEO, maybe at a future meeting, you could provide an update uh, to Council regarding that that was approved. Canada Day was approved by Council as part of the budget. There seems to be some confusion. All right, can I have a mover, please, to adjourn the meeting? Moved by Councillor Bussetti, seconded did, Councillor Perreg. Did Councillor Link favor. vote? All those in favor? Did Councillor Link vote? Yes, yes, against. Okay, I don't, was that recorded that Councillor Link voted against? Yes, okay, it was. I'm now calling for the question to adjourn the meeting. I have two that are supportive of adjourning the meeting. That's three, four, five supportive of adjourning the meeting. Thank you. We'll see you in a little while.